And a little introduction to bioenergetics. Wilhelm Reich's student, Alexander Lowen, founded the study of characterological development through movement, emotional expression, and analysis or insight, which obviated the need for medication and revolutionized the profession of psychiatry. Bioenergetics, as he called it, has a bit more acceptance in Europe where medicine is less steeped in drug therapy. But Lowen still used medical terminology, which focused on the dysfunctional or pathology side of human development. And thus, the six stages that he described were in these terms like schizoid or oral fixation or psychopathic or masochistic or sexual deviance or narcissism and obsessive compulsion. Well, he had brilliant observations in the clinical study, these developmental stages, but I choose to focus on the integration and strengths and the gifts of each theme within these stages. Now, as research in the field of positive psychology shows, focusing on the strengths of a person and developing them leads to more long-lasting, healthful results than focusing on weaknesses or limitations. In an advanced course on this subject, I'll show how antiquated medical diagnosis, which focused on symptomatology rather than etiology, that is, the causative factors for disease, are more effectively replaced with a neurodivergent model based on these six themes that we will be studying in this course. I call this the neurodivergent revolution. <laughs> Over the years of working with bioenergetic exercises in therapy and breath work, I have innumerable clients remark that they have derived more benefit from one session actively involving their body and breath than in years of talking about their problems. I believe that this is because unlocking the wisdom of the body and the healing medicine of the breath went more directly to the core of their aliveness than just verbalizing their issues. So, fair warning, we'll be using our bodies in this course. We're going to get our bodies into the act with the basic bioenergetic exercise called charging and discharging. Now, bioenergetics is the study of how body and mind coordinate in life expression modulated by the breath. Our bodies graphically display our freedom of flow or holding patterns in our daily life and give us clues as to how the traumas are held in place by fear and the beliefs that we evolved to justify and help fixate these frozen postures that we take towards life. Now, these are not random positions, but tend to follow our developmental course as humans all over the planet, reflected in all cultures. The first and basic exercise in bioenergetics is going to help us feel where our holding patterns may be and to start to free up the energy flow through them. So we're going to watch a little video. We created 19 little videos of this course so that you would actually not just hear it, but, but see the exercises that we're going to do. So let's watch this video clip together, which demonstrates this charging and discharging exercise. Bioenergetics as a discipline starts from the ground up. The belief here is that our strength comes from Mother Earth and having a solid firm footing on the ground is your sense of stability throughout your life. The charging and discharging exercise is used to experience bioenergy and its flow. Bioenergy is not just flow, it's also flow in a solid structure. Like many of the Taoist disciplines, Tai Chi or Nei Gong, 
The bones are what hold us up. The muscle system and the fascia system is what lets the flow through. And so if we're not frozen with our muscles and our fascia to our bones, we have the best of both worlds. We have stability and we have freedom of movement and flow of energy. This exercise originated by Alexander Lowen, who years later found out that Taoists were doing it two centuries before, but in the modern times, he popularized this exercise. It's called charging and discharging. It has two parts to it. The first part is to put the body in a mild stress position. And I underline a mild stress position because the beauty of it is you get to decide just how much is right for you. We're going to put the body in what's called the bow position, like a bow and arrow. If you're pulling back on a bow, the wood of the bow bends, and if there's any weak spot in that bow, that's where it would break. So this exercise is both diagnostic and therapeutic. It's diagnostic as we do it, we'll be able to see, ah, here are holding places in my body. Here are places that could use some extra support or strengthening. And we will also gain resilience and endurance as we do this. I did this exercise for myself many years on a daily basis just for that purpose. So starting with the bow position, we bend the knees and in fact, it's very important in all of these bioenergetic exercises not to lock our knees. When we lock the knees, it cuts off the flow of energy from the earth. And as we sink into our knees, we make sure that we have a solid A-frame structure. The ankles, the knees, and the hips are in alignment rather than the knees bowing in or out. Again, this gives the strongest sense of support for our body. So the knees come straight ahead and the small of the back is flat. It's not tilted backward or too far forward. It's in a neutral position. We come down and form a solid basis. And then the upper body, we bring the arms up so that the upper arms are parallel to the ground. And our eyes are wide open. We're staying in reality here. We're not going off into fantasy or into our mind. We're sinking down and we're breathing through the mouth, again, because this is a stress position. This takes us into a mild sympathetic nervous system reaction. And as we let go now, we keep the bones as our structure, but we let the energy move through our fascia. We relax the muscle system. This is like giving ourselves an internal massage. Now, our knee, our eyes are focused in front of us, not looking up or not looking down. We're breathing through the mouth and we're experiencing the movement in our body. As I've done this exercise many times, this movement starts fairly early for me. This does not happen for everyone. Some people may have to do the exercise a number of times before they feel any sort of a tremor or movement in their energy flow. That's perfectly okay. And staying with it is what's important. For the purpose of this demonstration, I am not going to stay with this for five minutes as I might do were I doing this on my own, but I'm just showing you the structure of the exercise. The second part of the exercise is discharging. 
Here is where I let go of that tension of the bow and I slowly come down, slowly coming all the way down and go just as far as you can. Some people may go this far, some, but as far as you can, letting go of your upper body like it's on vacation. You just let it go, Bre still breathing through the mouth and still letting your legs vibrate. One of the ways to help deepen this letting go is to imagine your butt is a balloon and you're breathing into it on the inhale. It's getting bigger, getting smaller on the exhale. This deepens your breath and helps you let go in the small of the back where there's chronic tension in much of our society. Again, Make sure you let go of your neck, your jaw, and if you relax in the small of the back, the vibration will be not only in your legs, but in your whole body. Again, you can hold this position longer and you'll build up your endurance as you practice it. Now, when it's, if you start to feel, for example, that your legs are going numb, there's too much tingling, just bring yourself up a little bit. Bring yourself up, don't bend over quite as much and that will help subside the intense tingling, but then as you're ready to come up, you do so from the ground up, not pulling yourself up with your head and your shoulders. It is like your feet have roots going deep into the earth, and now as you come up, you bring the energy from the earth up through your ankles, your calves your thighs, and you start to stack the vertebrae one at a time as you come up. You come up very slowly, unfurling like a flag, breathing the whole way, and feel the vital energy filling your body. Your knees always stay soft, slightly bent. And you may choose to do a second round of the exercise. I generally do it at least twice. Again, checking the small of your back, that it's flat, it's not arched, pressed all the way forward, pelvis is in a neutral position, your knees are bent, and again, you get to decide how low you're going to go or how high you're going to go. See what optimizes that vibratory action in your body. Now, if, for example, your arms start to feel a lot of stress in this position, there's another position you can take, putting your fists in the small of your back and bringing your elbows together. This is also a way to do the charging exercise. And again, after you do that for a while, you come back. Again, you're, you're, you check your feet while you're doing this because we have a tendency in our society to mm, put our feet out, tightening the gluteal muscles. And so we want to keep the feet parallel while we're doing it, checking ourselves, relaxing on the exhale, and allowing the vibration to spread throughout our body. Again, coming up, you do it slowly, stacking one vertebrae upon the other. Knees are soft. Just hold that for a moment and feel the aliveness 
and the fullness of energy in your body. With practice, you can extend the periods that you do for charging and discharging and the amount of times that you do it in a week. <laughs> now, this is probably the longest uh, of the video clips that I've done, but I wanted to go through it in fairly good detail because this is uh, a foundational exercise in bioenergetics. As you do this on your own, play with it and practice it uh, on your own, it, the vibration will start to increase for you. And in the beginning, it may feel a little weird. It's like, oh, my body is shaking. We're supposed to be uh, holding our bodies firm and not showing any weakness in, in our culture. But to allow, as I said, the bones to be the structure, but let the bioenergy flow through and be very pleasurable. We can, uh, I used to do this, uh, as I said, every day, especially when I worked in a high stress job. I would go into an office or find a space where I could do it, and it would like defrag my system. <laughs> I could go back and feel refreshed in doing it. So uh, I encourage you to come back to this exercise and you'll build resilience in your body as you do that.